Hi Facebook, happy Monday. Um, so again, continuing the Facebook Lives on Monday morning, my name is Jackie Broman from TBA Law. Last week we spoke in light of International Day with People with Disabilities coming up on the 3rd of December about parents providing for inheritance for their disabled adult children and the way that parents can um, make sure that the inheritance they leave is um, firstly protected, um, secondly managed by someone appropriately, appropriate, and thirdly that there um, are ways to make sure that it doesn't impact Centrelink if the person with a disability has to rely on income from Centrelink. But this week we are talking about the per person with disabilities themselves and doing their own planning. So um, firstly, it would be fairly offensive if we thought that people with a disability couldn't do their own documents or manage their own affairs. So um, people with a physical disability um, obviously have no um, problems whatsoever in doing their own documents in so far as um, powers of attorney for themselves, um, doing their own will, comprehending all of that and taking control of um, who will administer their estate and who will look after them if they can't look after themselves anymore. Um, quite often someone with a mental disability can still have capacity to do those documents for themselves as well. So it's got to be an individual assessment on a case by case basis. Um, but then sometimes the mental disability can be severe enough that the person lacks capacity. So there is a fairly fine line in there as well which we have to walk and it often depends on the family as to you know, whether we'll proceed to do documents for someone with a mental disability or whether we suggest they go off to VCAT. So um, the measure, I suppose, for capacity is not necessarily a medical test, it's a legal test. So whilst medical evidence is useful, um, a solicitor can also make their own assessment based on seeing the person and any medical evidence that they have. But then ultimately, if there is a dispute over the documents, it's up to the court to decide, okay? So no one else has um, exclusive rights to determine whether someone has capacity or not, except for the court. So it does sort of put us in a difficult situation. And most of the time we'll proceed um, if there's no issue in the family, as I was saying before. So an interesting scenario that I had recently was I was doing the documents for some parents of a disabled son who lived with them. And we decided that we would proceed with his documents as well. So he was in his late 30s. He had um, autism or was on that scale and also a learning disability. Um, but he could communicate well. Um, he lived at home with his parents and couldn't probably live independently yet, but they were working towards that. He was working for a disability service, so he was actually getting some a wage and he was accumulating super. So in fact, he'd saved about forty to $50,000 himself from working because he had very little he had to spend money on. Um, and he'd accumulated some super, and also there was a death benefit on his super fund. So there was close to 300,000 in super. So it was well and truly worthwhile doing documents for him. So on the assessment that we made, um, his parents brought in some reports about um, from specialists over the time that he'd been seeing. Um, and I spoke to him and he understood the concept about um, having someone look after his money for him and making medical decisions for him if he couldn't anymore. And he also understood the concept of when someone passes away, um, a will can um, dictate who those funds go to. So he understood the general concept and he understood that he had bank accounts, he understood that he had super and he understood that he had stuff because his stuff was more important to him really even though the value was lower, particularly his car because he could drive. So we did his documents and he was very clear that he wanted 
um, his parents to be the ones making decisions for him. He had a brother and a sister um, who were well and who had had kids themselves. In his will, he made it very clear that he wanted his nephews and nieces to benefit um, and that his brother and sister could be the alternates if something had happened to his parents to help look after him. So in that situation, it was quite okay to proceed with documents. Um, and not only that, the family was a fairly stable family and no one was going to argue with what he wanted to do. So there wasn't an issue there. The scenario would have been different if he didn't have capacity, in which case I would have had to help his parents go through the process of making a VCAT application to get administration and guardianship for their son. Um, but there wouldn't have been a, a, an ability to do a will in that situation. Um, and even though he had significant assets, they as administrators couldn't do a will. So the only way they would have gotten around that is making an application to the Supreme Court and the Supreme Court could have made a will in that situation if someone doesn't have mental capacity yet they have significant assets that need to be sorted out. So it can be quite important for people with a mental disability to um, look at all these aspects. And the other important thing as well is um, who helps that person with a disability after the parents have passed away. So if the parents have had power of attorney or administration through VCAT, it really needs to be sorted out within the family about who is the next person in line for that. And if it can't be determined either voluntarily by the person themselves or through VCAT, unfortunately it might fall down to the state trustees or in some families that don't get along well, it may end up being someone that the person with the disability doesn't like um, but that family member may be controlling and then you might be open to a situation where there's um, an abuse of power. So it can be a very tricky situation and parents with the person with a disability um, should consider making sure that things are all in place um, and take control while they can before it gets too late. So those main points to remember, I've got my three points. Um, a firstly assessment of capacity. So it's worthwhile bringing the person with a disability in to see a solicitor to see whether the solicitor thinks there's capacity to proceed with the documents. Then you'll know if there's not what you can do after that, which is a VCAT application. All right. And um, VCAT can be very straightforward when there's a medical report and there's no family dispute about who's going to administer um, the person's affairs. And then remember, state trustees is a fallback position. So if there's no one available to administer um, the funds for the person with a disability, state trustees is a service that, um, it, it used to be a government service, it's now privatised, but um, essentially a um, bureaucratic administrator. And there'd be a case manager um, and so on and so forth. So it wouldn't be as personal administration, but um, it would at least mean that the person with a disability wasn't left um, without someone looking after their affairs. So important leading up to um, International Day for people with a disability, um, that we are more educated about what can be done and also that people who have a dis disabled family member aren't left in the dark wondering um, where to find out this information or what they can or can't do. So if you do have um, someone in your family who has a disability or you know of a friend who has a child with a disability, it's worthwhile perhaps pointing out this um, video for them or sharing it with them. Um, because again, it's if this can be handled quite easily, it's one less thing off their plate and one less thing to worry about. So I hope.